Bhante, I am an Upasaka practicing at a monastery in the USA. I want to ordain and restrain according to the Patimokha to the best of my ability. I am very discouraged with how most monks in America I have seen practice. Will you please help guide me? Um, yes. Uh, this, uh, will I please help guide you? Well, okay, yes. But yes in the sense that um, this is clear that in today's age um, the standard of keeping the Buddhist monastic discipline um, is pretty low, unfortunately. So there is a lot of breaking of rules and so on. And now probably going to get in trouble for even saying that. We're not supposed to talk about it, but that's not really true. We're not supposed to say this monk broke this rule, that monk broke that rule, but because we don't want to be tattletales and, and cause conflicts. But um, to just talk about the state of the sun guiding is very important. And it's important that we're not hiding it. Because the point is not to hide it, the point is to be clear about who is the spokesperson for the sun guide. And I guess it's true that I'm not really the spokesperson. Um, but there, it, it can't be denied that when you go to the monasteries, if you spend some time there, if you go, f if you're a superficial visitor, you often don't see it, but if you stay for a while, you start to see that it's getting shaky. That's not a good thing, and it's not a doesn't make for a good environment for the practice. One thing you have to understand is it's tough being a monk. So breaking the precepts happens, um, and you have to understand the levels of breaking the precepts. So if a monk watches football, for example, which seems to... Apparently everyone's watching football. I'm, I'm not even sure if it's still on, but I think I heard recently they're near the f last game. <laughs> but uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Germany, I think, is playing. So that's as far as I go with that. But um, so if a monk is watching the World Cup, of football, soccer, whatever you call it. Uh, it's not a good thing. It's not a good sign. But that monk could still uh, recover. You know, it's not a major precept by any means, watching a football game. So that monk can come back and realize that there are better things to do and can come to see the the uselessness of that and can reflect upon watching the game and say to themselves, that's really not bringing me happiness, and, and, and so still has potential to develop. And this, is, this sort of thing is something that um, goes on the other side. So some people are, are, are too forgiving, and they, they just let monks do whatever they want and say whatever, it's fine, it's, you know, to each their own kind of thing. But the other side is where people, every little thing they begin to criticize, and they, they, they storm out of the monasteries and write nasty blog posts because the monks did something you know, it can often be. There was one monk who uh, who who split a community apart. I've told this before because he was eating eggs, I think, uh, and because he was eating meat, and so he split a community apart just over something like that, which isn't even in the Vinaya. Uh, eating eggs that haven't been fertilized, eating meat that hasn't been killed for you, this is not against the Vinaya, the, ru the monks' rules, and yet it managed to split an entire community apart. Many monks, many people wouldn't even go to see him. Um, so that kind of thing is common in the East and in the West, in, in all, all places. Westerners go into Buddhist monasteries and say, this isn't real. They look at the Buddha image and they say, that's not really Buddhism, I spit on your Buddha, that kind of thing. And this is going too far, uh, I think. You have to have compassion and understanding that it's tough being a monk, and it's especially tough being a monk in the West. Um, if you just if your only m monastic training has been in a university, which for a lot of these monks it is, and right out of university you're given this instruction on how to be a, um, a missionary, and then you go abroad, um, there's not the practical backing to help you reflect upon these things and help you let go of them. So to some extent you have to be forgiving and understand that it's still possible for such people to um, to recover. Now, if there's a lot of corruption and attachment to money and like asking lay... Some of the bad signs are like asking lay people for money, uh, over-attachment between the monks and the women, and, and 
over familiarity there is a bad sign um, excessive luxury where the monks are have have widescreen televisions and you see satellite satellite dishes are usually a bad sign but as I say oh I don't know I mean it's it's not a huge deal but not a good sign when you see satellite dishes and widescreen televisions and uh, um, that kind of thing. Uh, if the monks have stopped wearing robes, that's a really bad sign, that kind of thing. Um, but that being said, there's no question that you will benefit from a traditional monastic environment where you're, you at least are encouraged and allowed and taught how to practice the discipline of the Buddha. I didn't have that. You know, when I when I started out, it's, what I was lucky is the monastery I was at, the, what they did have was a strong tradition of meditation. Uh, so everyone had to start by practicing meditation, and there's a there's a, a, an environment that is supportive for the meditative practice. Now, what I didn't have was a strong monastic training. Actually, I was able to make that up on my own and by reading the books and and... So even to this day, I don't mind being in that monastery surrounded by monks who may not be keeping the rules. It doesn't really bother me because I have the focus on the meditation, which allows me to stay to myself and do, use, do my own discipline and not care what other people do That's so much. Um, so that's one thing, is to, to focus more on the meditation practice than on the discipline. Does this place have a strong meditative tradition instead of does it have a strong monastic discipline uh, but uh, best is if you can find a place where they teach both I understand that Wat Bana Nachad is a good place especially to learn monastic discipline but the better, best places that I've seen are in Sri Lanka if you want to ordain as a monk if anyone wants to ordain as a monk your best bet is to go to Sri Lanka now the problem with going to Asia at all to become a monk is that the general uh, uh, routine is you have to actually go once, practice with them, and then get a promise from them that they're going to write you a letter or, or whatever. And then you actually have to return to your country and apply for a new visa with a letter of permission to become a monk and then fly back to the country again a second time uh, to actually uh, think about ordaining because you you need a special visa to ordain and the only way you can get that visa is with a letter of permission from the monastery and the only way they're going to give you that permission is if you're already in the if you're already in the country practicing with them so you see it's almost a catch-22 but what it means is you need to go twice and so that's what you have to look at there an alternative is to find one of these places that does keep them in, a, in a North America. Now, they're usually full because obviously everybody wants those. There's what, Abayagiri in California. There's Bawana Society. I don't know how strict they are, but they're probably fairly good. Um, there's Meta Monastery in San Diego. And in general, check out the... Oh, I don't know. I don't want to say that. But no, I'm not going to say it. Those are my, my only suggestions. You're welcome to come here. You're going to see some of the... Uh, but the USA is still difficult for us because you still need a visa coming here, and I don't even think that really works. Not over the long term. Um, but find a place that is um, focused on meditation because, as I said, that can be another way to, to center yourself. The Buddha himself even said, you know, a lot of these rules... If you're practicing meditation, you don't really have to worry about the rules. If you happen to break one, it's not such a big deal. Um, but if you're in a place that's not practicing meditation, in fact, if you're in a place that's not practicing insight meditation, uh, even if they have a strong monastic practice, it's still not going to lead to enlightenment. So focus more on the practice. That will give you a, an ability to cultivate the moral discipline yourself. If without the practice, it's very difficult to cultivate moral discipline but vice versa without the moral discipline if you're breaking the moral discipline also difficult um, but um, I l still lean towards the meditation if you can find that 
you can make up the monastic discipline yourself. Don't don't rely too much on other people for that because it's just rules, right? So um, focus more, not completely, but more on the meditation. Okay, so that.